Electric vehicles, the next frontier, and if the refrain resonates like a mantra these days in an era where environmental issues dictate all agendas. However, what is often overlooked is that electric cars are not the saintly solution to the situation. They have their own complications. So what are these challenges? That's what we'll see in today's video. We find ourselves at an ecological crossroads, cities suffocated in pollution, a warming world, an increasingly bleak outlook. And for many, current environmental problems are amplified by fossil fuel-powered vehicles, one of the main contributors to pollution. For a long time, humanity has been seeking cleaner and sustainable transportation alternatives to combat climate change. By the way, let me ask you in the comments, do you believe in climate change or what some refer to as climate alterations? Now, some options seem very promising. At least here in Brazil, we consider ethanol-powered cars, which use fuel derived from sugarcane. It received strong government stimulus in the 1980s, signaling the beginning of cars that exclusively ran on alcohol, famously known for being difficult to start in the winter. However, the fuel shortage crisis in 1990, with its endless queues at gas stations, signaled the end of ethanol as the main fuel source in the country. It was only in 2003, with the emergence of flex engines, that it became possible to launch a car capable of running on both gasoline and ethanol, reviving the use of Brazilian fuel. Moving on, we also have CNG, compressed natural gas, which pollutes less than fossil fuels. However, CNG cars have limited range. Nevertheless, many gas stations in Brazil already provide this type of fuel, which emits fewer pollutants than gasoline, for example. We also have hybrid cars that combine an electric motor with a combustion engine. The combustion engine only kicks in during acceleration and at low speeds to save fuel. Its advantage is being able to run purely on electric mode in the city, using energy generated during braking to recharge the vehicle, among other options. Despite all these alternatives, electric cars are still seen as the natural successors to gasoline or diesel vehicles, and this preference for electric vehicles is not without reason. In operation, they emit no pollutants, presenting a cleaner image to the world. Additionally, they can be charged in the comfort of your home. So far, it all sounds like perfection, doesn't it? However, unfortunately, the reality is a bit more complicated and goes beyond that. Undoubtedly, electric vehicles are considerably more benign to the environment, but claiming that they are completely harmless is a tremendous mistake. A glaring example of this is the batteries that these electric cars use. When they reach the end of their lifespan, they become a disposal challenge that can affect urban hygiene. If it's already difficult to dispose of the batteries we use daily in our cell phones, imagine the ones from electric cars. And the worst part is that we currently don't have a viable solution to this problem. Another issue is the dependence of electric vehicles on cobalt, a crucial chemical element for their manufacturing but with a highly problematic extraction process. The Democratic Republic of Congo, the world's leading cobalt producer, has this element as one of its main sources of wealth, as 70% of global cobalt reserves are found there. However, cobalt mining in Congo is extremely problematic. There are two forms of mining, one conducted by large structured companies and the other carried out informally by ordinary people. This cobalt mining is the only source of income for thousands of people in the northern part of the country, where working conditions are deplorable. There are no protective equipment or preventive measures against diseases and accidents caused by handling the chemical element. For example, the toxic dust released when cobalt stones are crushed can cause fatal lung diseases. Furthermore, there are no labor laws protecting the workers. According to an interview with a miner conducted by DW, 
they earn around only $10 if they manage to mine 2 kilograms of cobalt in a single day. But the situation in the mines doesn't stop there. Often, to access the mines and extract cobalt, individuals have to crawl into tunnels, which, as you can imagine, involves the use of child labor, which is highly prevalent in cobalt mining. It is very sad. It is also worth highlighting that China plays a significant role in the cobalt economy, as 15 out of the country's 19 largest industries are Chinese-owned. Unfortunately, the Asian giant is known for disregarding both the environment and labor rights. There are numerous accusations against Chinese companies for exploiting child labor in cobalt mines. Notably, well-known American corporations have also been accused of benefiting from this exploitation in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Tesla, one of the world's largest electric car manufacturers, is among the companies mentioned in a lawsuit in the United States, accused, along with other major players you might be familiar with, such as Apple and Google, of having knowledge that the cobalt used in their products could be associated with child labor exploitation. It is important to note that many miners consider themselves fortunate if they manage to extract those two kilograms of cobalt in a highly productive day. The issue is that cobalt is not only indispensable in the manufacturing of electric cars but also required in large quantities. A single car may require up to 30 kilograms of cobalt in its composition. And yet, this car is promoted as environmentally sustainable, when in fact, cobalt is a non-renewable natural resource. Therefore, for those concerned about depleting petroleum resources, this doesn't seem like a very smart trade-off. Of course, these vehicles are considered essential components for a greener world, and I even bet on that since they emit fewer greenhouse gases. However, where does human life fit into this equation? Finally, we can assert that children play a crucial role in the manufacturing of electric vehicles. On the other hand, oil platforms tend to be models in terms of safety. Although they are not 100% secure, there are numerous protocols and equipment aimed at minimizing the risk, something that would be inconceivable in a cobalt mine. At least while I'm recording this video, all the workers involved, from oil exploration to the fuel reaching your car, are legally contracted and have their rights guaranteed. So, to compensate for all this damage in manufacturing, electric cars don't emit pollutants, right? Well, that depends on the point of view. As we have seen so far, an electric vehicle obviously goes through a manufacturing process, and during this process, there are several key components to understand the sustainability, or shall we say, the lack of it in this industry. These vehicles are composed of dozens of components, such as cobalt, which need to be mined, refined, transported, and manufactured. These components are either polluting or produced in a way that also harms the environment. Furthermore, what is the most obvious way for an electric car to pollute the environment? Yes, through electricity. That's because, unlike Brazil, where we use renewable sources to generate electricity, such as hydroelectric power, in most parts of the world, the main sources of electricity are also non-renewable natural resources, such as oil and coal. It's true that electric cars don't emit carbon while they are running, but during their production, there is a significant emission of these elements, like nickel, graphite, cobalt, and other elements that make up the electric car. They also emit carbon dioxide and radiation. To produce a single ton of these elements, 75 tons of toxic waste from various sources are discarded, along with another ton of radioactive waste. These are numbers that you might not have been aware of, but they are astonishing, especially when considering that these machines are promoted as solutions to clean up the world. It's also important to keep in mind that there are positive and negative aspects regarding electric cars. A very relevant point in their favor is that they are much more efficient than gasoline or diesel vehicles. In fact, this efficiency is crucial, 
as the cost per kilometer driven by an electric vehicle is three times lower than that of a combustion car. The performance, combined with the efficiency of electric vehicles, is admirable, and the absence of noise is also a notable advantage. However, it's essential to acknowledge the full picture and consider the environmental impact of electric cars, including the extraction and manufacturing processes, as well as the sources of electricity used to power them. It's a complex issue with both positive and negative implications, and it requires careful evaluation from an ecological standpoint. And another advantage when it comes to noise pollution, combustion engines are very loud, significantly impacting cities and raising our stress levels. On the other hand, electric engines are so quiet that the European Union has created a law that requires manufacturers to add an artificial type of noise to these vehicles to prevent accidents. Especially when they are moving at low speeds or during parking maneuvers. At first glance, it seems like the perfect car, silent, beautiful, fast, efficient, and environmentally clean. But as we have seen, that's not the whole story. The range of electric vehicles still leaves much to be desired, requiring frequent recharging. And these recharging times are considered slow when compared to the refueling time of a traditional car. This is definitely an important factor, so much so that according to the University of California, one out of every five Americans who purchased an electric car regretted it and returned to using a combustion car. But I believe that was in the early days of these cars, you know. I still have great hope for these vehicles to be optimized. And of course, as we've seen, they have less pollution. However, the biggest stain on the image of electric vehicles is undoubtedly the exploitation that occurs in the Congo. It is an unequal country where children are forced to work to feed themselves. Undoubtedly, electric cars represent a great advancement for humanity, and we could say they are inevitable. However, Categorically stating that they do not harm the planet, I believe, is a mistake. The world is not as black and white as you may think. There are good and bad things in almost everything. And if electric cars are destined to dominate the world, so be it. But I hope they can solve all their problems, including if you are not in favor of electric cars. I'll leave this video that is playing on your screen now where I talk about a great project that Toyota has implemented in the world and in their cars. Toyota, one of the pioneers in hybrid cars and electric engines, openly stated to the public through its former CEO that they didn't believe in electric cars. They are developing a new combustion engine project, which you can see in the video that is playing on your screen now. Did you enjoy this video? Give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I post new videos every day. See you tomorrow.